understand sudden stratospheric warming now this is a very interesting phenomena which caused severe rainfall in the regions of southern india recently in the month of january more than 10 to 50 percent above normal rainfall was seen in these regions now when the studies were conducted when research was conducted the reasons were cited to be the effect of ssw which is sudden stratospheric warming that occurs in the arctic region before we understand this concept let's understand two basic things one is the earth that we talk about now within the earth we have the various layers the middle section is where we call it as the equator and towards the north and the south we have the north pole and the south pole but this is just the earth if we talk about the atmosphere of the earth this is beyond the layers of the earth and the layers of the atmosphere the closest layer to the earth is the troposphere the next layer is the stratosphere stratosphere is the layer that we are going to focus today on and this is a layer that extends from 10 to 50 degrees this is the layer where ozone is present and has a usual temperature of minus 56 degrees to minus 2 degrees celsius so it's a relatively cold layer that is seen in the upper atmosphere most of the light Lively phenomena, the life phenomena occurs in troposphere. Now, what actually triggers a sudden stratospheric warming is a very, very interesting concept. To understand this, we have a very simple demonstration here. What happens is the earth is being tilted away from the sun in the uh, winter months so what happens in the winter months the sun is here and the earth is tilted away from the sun so what happens is the region of equator receives ample of uh, ample of sunlight and temperature however the pole area remains the north pole area remains in dark now north pole is the region where you we know there is six months of day and six months of light now what would happen when the light falls onto the equator when the light falls onto the region of equator here the layer of troposphere and stratosphere would be heated understand this very carefully but the region towards the polar area is a cold area is an area under darkness as of now because it is winter here so what would happen there would be lack of temperature gradient that would be seen and the stratosphere here would witness low temperatures so what happens within the stratosphere we are just comparing the stratosphere of the equator versus the stratosphere of the poles now at the poles and the equator the gradient of the temperature between the two layers between the stratosphere in the two regions of equator versus the pole would be very very large so we would see a large temperature gradient that would be seen between where between the regions of equator versus the polar areas now due to this huge temperature difference that is seen strong winds would blow from the south towards the north now when these strong winds blow the cold air wind which is also called as the jet stream which is usually seen above the stratosphere somewhere between the stratosphere and the uh, uh, sorry above the troposphere somewhere between the troposphere and the stratosphere would basically be affected and once it is it is affected there is stratospheric polar vortex that would be formed in the north hemisphere now this polar vortex which is being formed in the north would be affected by the winds moving in towards the north pole because here the temperature as we saw in the stratosphere was high in contrast to the temperature of the polar area and this would lead to a sudden rise of the temperature of the stratosphere and the temperature of the stratosphere could go up to 50 degrees celsius in contrast to the actual temperature which remains from minus 50 to minus 2 degrees celsius there could be a sudden spike in the temperature now this sudden spike in the temperature is not for a prolonged period it's just within 5 to 10 days you have a sudden increase in the temperature that is seen now as soon as this increase in the temperature is seen it would create anomalies in the troposphere the layer below it and troposphere is the layer 
layer which is responsible for the weather phenomena on the earth and since there is a sudden anomaly in the stratosphere sudden warm warming that takes place in the stratosphere it would affect the troposphere and finally the weather on the earth so this is where we understand the concept of sudden stratospheric warming now with this diagram we understand a normal scenario versus a scenario where there is a sudden stratospheric warming in a normal scenario we have a stable polar vortex and the cold air remains within the arctic but what happens when there is a sudden stratospheric warming the warm air gushes towards the north and this creates a movement of the jet stream the jet stream actually gets weakens and moves below so it approaches closer to the region of eurasia closer to the region of mediterranean and it also affects the climatic conditions of the indian subcontinent at this point of time so when there is a sudden stratospheric warming event it affects the climate of the troposphere towards the subtropical and the tropical regions as well now some of the recent examples that have happened as we said in 2021 uh, the recent example that we can understand is uh, tamil nadu karnataka and kerala are three of the states that received extremely heavy rainfall kasorgarh and mallapuram in kerala received more than 100 times the normal rainfall all the districts of tamil nadu received more than 10% uh, about 10% than the normal rainfall that they witnessed and nearly 1 million hectares of crops were submerged in these areas and that was caused because of the sudden stratospheric warming this event occurs 6 times in a decade so every 10 years it occurs 6 times but some of those are much much more powerful uh, because the meandering and the jet stream movement varies and the vortices that are being formed also varies sometimes there are two vortices there that are formed sometimes there are three vortices that are formed and so on and so forth the jet stream which is actually a very strong stream moving at a high pace so if let's say there is a pilot moving into the path of the jet stream it would either have to move parallel to the jet stream or move in a layer above or uh, below it the reason being it cannot just move opposite to it because of such the such a strong uh, movement that is being caused by the jet stream so this jet stream which is originally very strong is weakened as a part of the sudden stratospheric warming now the sudden stratospheric warming could be explained either in To, uh, in two ways either it could be a easterly wave or a westerly wave so westerly is nothing but simply a reverse of what the easterly a sudden stratospheric warming is so when there is a easterly sudden stratospheric warming it leads to huge cold, cooling effect on the indian subcontinent when there is a cooling effect what would happen definitely the intense winters would be seen in these areas and the western disturbances would be further enhanced however when there is a westerly sudden stratospheric warming it would lead to less cooling effect that is seen in the indian main uh, mainland or the indian subcontinent that would be seen now the recent phenomena of january 2021 episode that we are talking is very very important to understand because just 5 to 6 days prior to understanding the peaking of the sudden stratospheric warming we saw a spike in the rainfall patterns in south south india and that was a kind of relation that helped us establish that sudden stratospheric warming is responsible for a significantly higher amount of rainfall that was witnessed in india during that time now as we said the polar vortices now polar vortices can either strengthen or weaken now when it weakens as we saw in the previous diagram in this diagram when it weakens it weakens when there is a sudden stratospheric warming so the polar vortex becomes stable and strong when there is less stratospheric warming it weakens when there is a strong sudden stratospheric warming so in this case the polar vortex would become wavy it would weak out however in a normal scenario it would remain stable and strong 
so when the polar vortex is strong it would lead to faster drying of the regions of mediterranean uh, region extreme storms that would be seen in the north eurasian region and mild winters there however when it weakens what would happen it would lead to intensified sudden stratospheric warming phenomena and this would be further announced by what by the melting of the ice and ice of the bering sea kara sea which surrounds the northern uh, arctic region actually starts to melt at a rapid rate and because of which there is a co constant kind of cooling effect of sudden stratospheric warming which would dilute the uh, the imp impacts that would be seen because of the global warming so we understand that when there is a weakening of the uh weakening of the polar vortex there would be stronger sudden stratospheric warming that would be seen however if the polar vortex is stable it is uh, it is constant you would see less proportions or less probability for sudden stratospheric warming events that would be seen and as we said these warming events are indeed responsible for atmospheric changes in the regions of tropical and subtropical uh, areas so this was about the ssw the sudden stratospheric warming a very very recent and important concept uh, which has been in news recently we would be covering many such important topics for for your gs in the upcoming days stay tuned have a wonderful day ahead